Welcome to Mount Richmore. I want everyone to know, this is real grass. Yeah, well, it's real grass. Wrong. This is real. No, it's good and it's beautiful. thick and delicious. All these liberals are going, you need a greenhouse. I'm like, well, what do you call this? <laughs> is, is AOC's house as green as mine? Probably not. How dare you? You all know John Rich. John Rich is a multi-platinum award-winning country music legend. Rich, who ironically was born dirt poor in Amarillo, Texas, rocketed to fame as a country music hit writer and performer based in Nashville. John Rich has delivered more than just platinum records to the music city. Nashville is a city that likes to party, and the writer of Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy owns the perfect place to pony up. John Rich's Redneck Riviera Bar is a cornerstone in downtown with his own barbecue sauce and American whiskey to boot. In 2011, John Rich's star power and business savvy caught the attention of a popular TV host at the time, a man named Donald Trump. Rich would go on to win Donald Trump's Celebrity Apprentice season and remain the only man on earth who successfully got to Trump to wear a cowboy hat. While Trump may have his name on skyscrapers in downtown Manhattan, John Rich has conquered his own mountain just west of downtown Nashville. Built on the land where the Battle of Nashville took place sits Mount Richmore. Mount Richmore is a 19,000 square foot, three story, 20 room mansion with an elevator and a roof deck overlooking a custom Gibson guitar shaped pool with a guitar headstock hot tub. John Rich personally designed every aspect of the vertical concrete and steel mansion right down to the guitar toilet seats. The current day value of the property is between eight to $10 million. And the moment you pull through the front gate, you can see why. Welcome to the house that music built, today on Based Cribs. We are here at John Rich's house in the heart of Nashville. We're gonna see what this, the largest house in Nashville is like. With the John Rich. What's going on, John? Is this like a, a house? Is this like a... Yeah, it's a house. I mean, this is it's like the biggest... It's just like any house you've been in before. This is the biggest house I've ever It's seen. a fun house. Come on in. Welcome All to right. Music City, brother. After meeting John at the front door, he welcomed us into the entryway of his massive mansion. This is the most patriotic room in America. Check this out. From time to time, I've had people walk up holding dog tags. They go, well, this was my brother, or this was my son, or whatever, and I go, wow, I'm, I'm sorry you lost him. So they go, well, he's a big time fan of Big and Rich, or big time fan of you, and I, you should have him. And I go, whoa, 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 uh-uh. Uh. They go, oh no, they would be so excited knowing this was in your house, I go, okay. I mean, most people don't have a gigantic memorial to the American service members in the, open it in the foyer it's the first of their thing you see house yes yeah so then you get on the elevator and you basically go through this house it's Let's like a giant honky tonk toy box this is just a collection of places I've been people I've worked with I'll give you some of the nasty Glenn Campbell Tom Petty Merle Haggard Quincy Jones Larry Gatlin there's the president of the United States wearing a cowboy hat Never seen it before. I think Trump looks good in a cowboy hat. What do you think? <laughs> this elevator took us up to the roof of the home where John showed us what it's like from the very top of Mount Richmore. So right now you're about almost 90 feet up, looking right at downtown Nashville. You're up here on the roof. I call it the world's biggest deer stand because you could probably hit a white tail in three different counties from up here. But what's cool about this spot is during the Civil War, the, uh, the south was downtown in Nashville and the north came down the Cumberland River and started cannonballing them and hitting them with everything they had. Ran them out of downtown. They ran right through this valley, which is now all Vanderbilt. That's all Vanderbilt. They ran right through here and right up onto this hill. When I was building this house and we were excavating, we're finding musket balls and saber handles and bridles and bits and all kinds of stuff. It's just always astonishing to me to think that was not really that long ago. Is it hard to get grass to grow on a rooftop like this? Like, I want everyone to know, this is real grass. Yeah, I'm, it's real I'm not grass. Wrong. This is real. No, it's good and it's beautiful. thick and delicious. You bring a mower up here? Absolutely. <laughs> Either that or we let the goats loose. But don't, normally you don't let the goats loose that often. But sometimes we'll just turn the goats loose and let them eat it. For real? No. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said so. I said so you've gone green, John. See, that's what I mean. All these liberals are going, you need a greenhouse. I'm like, well, what do you call this? <laughs> is, is AOC's house as green as mine? Probably not. No way. Probably not. We're on the third floor right now? You're on the third floor right now, yeah. Most and, uh, people don't have a concert hall we'll in their house, but look around. We'll bring in uh, bring in the soldiers sometimes when they're, uh, when they're not working. And yeah, we'll load in the band. 
get a bartender, say, all right, boys, have a good time. I'm going to I'm gonna play a little uh, Merle Haggard, you know, and we'll get up and just start ripping and hang up for three or four hours. My wife and I, a family goal every year is to go past a million bucks a year that we raise for charities in this room. Mm. So Folds of Honor, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, our local food bank, you know, various things like that. So if you look at a wall like this, it looks like drywall, right? It looks like sheetrock. Sure knock, knock your knuckles on that. A solid concrete. So the whole house is vertically poured concrete. This has us to have to have a story. So the, the disco saddle was a housewarming present from a buddy of mine down in Texas. And uh, that actually hung in the old honky tonk in Texas called Gillies, which is a world famous honky tonk. Went out of business back, I think, in the late 80s, early 90s. For so, the rhinestone saddle. Yeah, so when we have your birthday party here, we hit that with the lights and we, we, make, we make it turn and we turn the room around. Because it ain't a party till you got a disco saddle. So what says welcome to Nashville, Benny, more than a guitar-shaped swimming pool? Oh! Again, this is all a custom job. Oh, yeah. You designed this. Oh, yeah. You, you know. worked on this and designed every we did. square inch of this place. We did. Yeah, me okay. and my wife. It was what actually my wife's idea to have a guitar pool. You'd think, think that would have been my idea. This is a Gibson? That's, that's shaped after a Gibson Hummingbird, yeah. It's my favorite guitar, so. Yeah, when the pool guy came, he goes, what do you want it to look like? And I reached up on the wall and I said, I want it to look like this. Is that a jacuzzi? Yeah, that's the hot tub. The that's headstock the is the hot tub. The headstock <laughs> is the hot tub. Of course on. it is. That's it. Damn, man. That's it. A lot of people have sat at this bar. Um, I've had everybody from, you name it. I mean, you saw the pictures in the elevator. It's a lot of people that have sat right here and, and had a good time. Redneck Riviera Whiskey, that's my, that's my brand. And I wanted to come with something that was premium, but you could afford it. Where's the American blended? And nobody had anything called that. There was no bottle that said that. So Redneck Riviera Whiskey was born. It's now in ten, over 10,000 stores throughout the U.S. <laughs> Cheers. Celebrate your freedom, Benny. Celebrate your freedom. Cheers. <laughs> After enjoying some delicious Redneck Riviera American whiskey, John took us to his VIP room, one of his favorite places in the house, and I think you'll see why. This is right. the VIP room, so this is where you should have been the whole time. VIP. Guns and guitars, obviously, up on this wall, but these are all uh, guitars I've used throughout my career that I retired eventually because out on the road they, they start to, you know, start to wear out a little bit. That Gibson Hummingbird with all the signatures on it. I wrote about 650 songs on that one guitar. So much Johnny Cash. You love Johnny love Cash. Love Johnny Cash. That that picture there was a, Johnny Cash was a pencil sketcher. So that's actually a pencil sketch Johnny Cash did that they made 350 prints of it and that's it. And he called that that uh, Bird Out of Prison was the title of that picture there. Do you think you would be in country music were it not for Johnny Cash? His music, without a doubt, uh, got down into my DNA early made me want to do it. So this is, a, this is a lyric collection. Blank sheets of paper and pencils are the most powerful things in the world. I like to reach out to the artist that wrote some of my favorite songs and say, hey, would you just scratch the lyrics down, man? I'm gonna frame it and hang it in the house. So it's all kinds of songs. God Bless USA is up there. Kid Rock did Cowboy for me. Living on a Prayer, Bon Jovi. This is where I write a lot of songs. Yeah. So if I'm gonna sit down and write, I'll come back here because it's kind of in the back and it's kind of quiet. And I look up at these great songs and go, well, that's what you're shooting at. Think hard. <laughs> Sniper rifle, come on. So that's a Barrett 50 cal. So that that is a rifle that really transformed war. Roddy Barrett, back in the early 80s, uh, he was a photographer. Well, one day he got hired to take pictures of a uh, Coast Guard boat and the Coast Guard boat had a 50 cal on it. He's looking at his pictures and he goes, man, there's got to be a better way to build a 50 cal where one guy could carry it. Because at that point it took at least two men to move a 50 cal around. So he's not a gunsmith. He's not a machinist. He's none of those things. He starts sketching out this gun and he goes, I believe that would work. So he takes out a second mortgage on his house, goes totally into debt. And after several months of working, they build the prototype to the Barrett 50 cal. And the U.S. military said, we want thousands of these. And he goes, I made it in my garage. I'm not sure I'm supposed to do that. They go, well, we'll help you build a plant. We'll help you figure this whole thing out. And now that rifle uh, the longest kill shot in the history of war is on that rifle. That rifle pushed the Taliban back a mile. I mean, it is a reach out and touch somebody uh, kind of weapon. And the greatest living American gun maker is Ronnie Barrett. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> All right, so where are we going now, John? You want to go see the car? Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Watch old bandit run. Smoking a bandit. What a beauty. Now you can tell I drive this car. Like it's got fingerprints on it and it's got dust in the floor, but it gets driven. So I drive it quite a bit. Is this the original? This is not the one from the movie, okay. but it, it is a factory original uh, Smoking the Bandit Edition Trans Am. It's not been modified. It's about as close as you're gonna get to the, you know, the original, original car. I like original stuff. I don't like the soup them up. Just do what the car does, you know? This particular car, they only made 1102 of this car. So they didn't make, it was a very low production car. Most of these cars have either been wrecked or completely worn out mm. or they've been totally modified. So I'm not aware of another car from that 1102 that has not been modified. I looked for a long time for this car, uh, found it down in Georgia, original owner had it and he was ready to let it go. And I've had it about 15 years now. So it's, it's part of the family. So it's one of one. So if somebody goes to Nashville, somebody books, somebody's watching this, books their vacation in Nashville, you may see John Rich rolling around hey, in an original Trans Am. Listen, just book your trip to Nashville, give me a call, I'll pick you up in the Smoking the Bandit car, take you down to Redneck Riviera, pour you a shot, and everything will be great. <laughs> Speaking of one of a kind, God bless you. Thanks, man. Thank you. John Rich's story is your classic only in America story. Come from nothing, hard work, blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of grit, and a little bit of luck sprinkled in there, and you can make it to the top, the very top, of Mount Richmore, sitting there with a guitar and your own bottle of whiskey. What a life, what a country. God bless America. Thank you for joining us on Based Cribs. See you next time.